I am feeding my starter for the first time in I don't know how long. Just had this little <laughs> kind of gross looking baggie of it in our fridge here. And before then it had even been a while, but it smells good. So I'm just gonna try and get some out. I don't need much, just like a tablespoon. Chainsaw always. Even that is enough, but I'm gonna get just like a little bit more. I'm hoping to start making some pizza, and so I need to get it fed and ha happy and active again. So that's how much I have, and then what's on the spoon, and that'll be plenty. A lot of people think that they have to have a bunch of starter um, to like get it active again, and you actually want the opposite. You want a really small amount. And my sourdough course is always, always available on my website, which I'll throw into the description of this video. So I'm not actually making anything with this. I'm just feeding it to see how active it'll get within one feeding. So I'm just gonna do, that's 28 grams of flour. So I'm just gonna do that and do the same amount of filtered water. Pretty much. And then mix. We'll see how this does. I think it's probably been about three months of this just sitting, maybe a little bit less than that, but it looks good, it still smells good. I don't think it's gonna be a problem at all. All right, so lid back on, and I'm just gonna let that sit. It's just a tiny bit on the bottom. So I would hope to see some bubbles within about five hours today. I'll report back. Down here at the pond now, give you a little pond update. So it's clearing up really well. And over here, I have a lot of clover that has come up from the seed I scattered. So there's a mix of clover and rye over here, the perennial rye. And that is just something that'll be really good that will take off pretty quickly to start holding these edges a little bit better. So I was really glad to see some of this coming up uh, before it gets cold. So we need as much as we can to hold these banks in place. And it is all the way around, so I'm really happy about that. Queen, what are we doing today? We're heading up to the Knoxville area to get some pot plants. At the nursery, trying to find the aquatic plants. It's really pretty. I wanted to come to this one because they have um, a good selection of natives. Yesterday we went to a garden center that had a really good list online of some local aquatic, like native aquatic plants. You can find some aquatic plants at like regular garden centers or like a Home Depot or something like that, but it's hard to find selections of native things. So we made the drive there. It was around Knoxville and got a few things. I didn't go crazy because I mean, for us, a lot of what we did this for is for livestock. And so we don't need this like elaborate planted pond. We're going to get goldfish. We're not going to do koi. So for now, I just wanted to keep it simple and just get some stuff in since it's gonna get cold soon and I want stuff to have a little bit of time to acclimate and put some roots down before it gets cold and then hopefully a lot of stuff will take off come spring next year. So what I got, I got some Creeping Jenny, which is pretty standard, um, just for the banks to help hold them a little bit more and it's really easy to grow, really simple. I got two of those because again it spreads really fast and then I got this blue rush which is a juncus and I'm going to separate this out quite a bit because there's a lot going on here and it's pretty 
pot bound. So I'm gonna take that out and that'll be planted about three inches deep in the water, something like that. It doesn't wanna be too, too deep. And same with this guy. Um, this is a golden sedge and super pot bound, really healthy looking roots. And so it doesn't wanna be fully submerged, but it doesn't wanna be fully out of the water. So kind of like about where the water line has been hanging out lately. And then I also got a type of a papyrus, which this one is not native, but I wanted some diversity too. And it's not invasive. It doesn't like proliferate a ton, so I'm not too worried about it. But something that does become an issue <laughs> is water lily. Um, so I just got one and I'm gonna always keep this in a pot. It does have like a couple little bulbs coming up, some new growth and it grows from a tuber so I can cut it and separate it and have more than one plant pretty soon. I'm gonna wait until spring to do that though. Um, so I'm just gonna sink this whole pot down into the pond at least a foot deep, maybe more like two feet. And again, I'm always gonna keep this in a pot so that it doesn't proliferate and become an issue because they can be invasive. The other thing I got that is probably the most important, I don't remember what these call these are called. This is one of those ones that just you sink it down in and it grows fully in the water and it is really, really good for oxygenating the water, which is what we need because I can already see some algae starting to take off. So this is, I don't know, I'll find it and I'll put it in the caption, but it's a really standard pond plant to help bring in a lot more oxygen. And then I also got some daffodil bulbs and tulip bulbs because this is a really good time of year to put those in the ground. And I wanna put these up on top of the root cellar. So I'll take those up top in a little bit once I get these planted in the pond. Okay, that should be good. And it's basically just going to chill there and overwinter. For all of these that want to be fully submerged, they just come in like bundled stems. I have a pocket full of gravel that I'm going to kind of sink these down with, not too deep, probably a foot, foot and a half max. Um, separate them out first and then I'm going to sink them down and kind of try to spread them all over the pond since these are the ones that I think will really do us the most good. Ugh, I'm definitely gonna have to get in this pond. I really don't want to. It's pretty cold today, but I need to sink these down better than that. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Yeah, that's cold. All right. So I'm literally just putting the stems down, not really burying them, but just kind of putting them on top of the silt and everything and clay which they'll do just fine in and putting a couple of rocks on top of them and that'll just give them a good head start with their roots and also protect them from any like severe cold weather that could come in the next few months. <laughs> of course, it's literally the coldest day so far, and I'm getting in the pond. Plants are officially planted. They're very hard to see, but you can kind of see the grasses around and some of the creeping jenny. So this will definitely be a long game kind of thing. We're okay waiting for these to take root and kind of proliferate over the next couple of seasons. Um, and we don't want to overplant really because again, Zelda and Louisa will be coming down here every so often and just kind of tearing up the banks a little bit. So we just wanted to do enough to get some things in there while also not spending very much money on something that is basically a livestock pond. <laughs> 